Hi, this is a short video on how we prepared for Tropical Storm Gonzalo on July 25th, 2020. Uh, on the 23rd, we were in the Southern Grenadines in the island of Myru, and we got word that the storm was possibly going to hit the Southern Windwards as a Cat 1 hurricane. So we made the decision on Friday morning to run south to Grenada to try to get out of the storm's eye. We'll pick up the action from there. Good morning, Skipper. Good morning. What's happening? Well, woo! we are running south. Hopefully this is the right course of action from Tropical Storm Gonzalo. We played chicken with it as long as we could up in the central Grenadines, but all the models keep leaning towards the eye of the storm passing north of this point right here, which is the north end of Grenada. So we want to be in the southern quadrant. Uh, so we are running. We have both engines going, 2,000 RPM, uh, full main set, and uh, we are moving along at uh, seven and a half, eight knots. So we're trying to get into an anchorage down on the south side. I've reached out to Trinidad to see if we can get in there, but uh, for the moment, it's just put distance between us and what we think is going to be the most likely path of the storm. So that's where we are right now. It's yeah, tough. If any of the models actually agreed. And this is the other thing. Uh, because of COVID restrictions, uh, someone mentioned that they're not flying as many uh, Hurricane Hunter air uh, flights. I don't know if that's true. Uh, so that is uh, messing with the normal accuracy uh, of the algorithms. But um, I don't know. I, I don't know what the answer is. I'm not in that in that world. So we can only go on what we think is the, the most likely course of action. And it's a guess, and it's hard. This is really, really hard trying to make a decision based on multiple models suggesting multiple outcomes. Uh, but from not so bad to holy shit scary. Right. I mean, anywhere from a tropical annoyance to a Cat 1 hurricane. And our backup plan was to go into Canawan into a super yacht marina, uh, very well protected with concrete. But the problem with that is uh, there was very little protection from the wind. There was good protection from the storm surge, but uh, concrete uh, docks and maybe not an opportunity to spider web, spider web line ourselves away from the, the, the possibility of getting banged in. And if the storm goes right over the top of us, we're going to get a 180 degree wind shift and it's going to tug one way and then push the other way. And how do you plan for that? So the best that we can do is get out of the eye of the storm, which is what we're doing. So, Along with every uh, other flurry of clouds. That grenade sure looks nice. So here we go. Yep. Arriving late to the party, everyone's gonna hate us. Yeah, that's the way it goes. This is the boat that was in salt with the us. One of the things that amazed me on the trip down was the amount of coordination we were able to do uh, via phone. And we had a friend on the ground there, who another Leopard 46 owner, who drove down to Egmont for us to take a look at the harbor to see if there's any room. This is what he sent us. Uh, it was very crowded in the inner harbor. The outer harbor is deep and not very, very well protected. So on the recommendation of another friend, uh, we tried the next bay to the east, which is Calavini Bay. And he had been in there before and tied to the mangroves, so we went in there, and it was great. Uh, you can see from our track, it was not easy for us to find a good anchorage spot. And I'll show you the video now of what we, what we encountered. So when we arrived in Calavini Bay, this is what we found. It was uncrowded and very well protected. The channel came in uh, from the southeast. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, that was the entrance to the channel right there. And we ended up uh, stern tying to mangroves. So you can see the lines going in. Uh, we have uh, several bridles going back into the mangroves. Kids climbed back in there and helped us tie them up. Uh, it was uh, it, it was a lot of work um, and a lot of stress in the moment, but uh, all well worth it. Here we have a stern bridle going out as well. Uh, we were very close to the shore, uh, probably only 10 feet, uh, but we had uh, six to eight feet of water under our rudders right there. So it was a really good situation to be in. So the storm ended up passing much farther south than most models predicted. The ECMWF model had it going farther south, but they were they seemed to be the lone dissenting voice at first. So we made the best decision we could. The storm passed between uh, Trinidad and Tobago and uh, Grenada. And on Saturday morning, it was obvious that it was going to pass uh, south of Grenada. Did we make the right decision? We made the best decision we could based on the information we had at the time. And then we executed our plan. It all worked out in the end. You know, we survived. We were able to hoist drinks when it was all over. 
and we learn a lot of really, really good lessons that we can apply to the next storm if another one comes along.